Yeah, soldiers, it is your boy, the anime is coming back to another video, and this is why all the Naruto Shippuden movies cannot happen. Except the last, but that will get its own video since it's canon. For a series, I started watching different Naruto movies and made videos discussing why they cannot fit in the canon of the story. And I have finally covered all the non-canon movies while well besides the Boruto movie, which will get its own video. After much deliberation, I can safely say it is no longer canon. Now, will there be another Naruto movie or Boruto movie? Well, for Naruto, there is a live action movie that's still happening. I'll probably cover it once it drops. As for Boruto, however, at this point in time, I highly doubt it. Because Boruto is like halfway into the story and we got nothing during part one of Boruto. Besides, of course, the Boruto movie. Also, this compilation, all these videos, these are not my personal opinions on the movies. This is me being as objective as I recently can. If you like I miss anything, then leave a comment below. And yeah, shout out to you for this video, and shout out to all the stuff on screen or whatever. With that long intro out of the way, let's get right into the compilation. Enjoy. Yeah, soldiers, it's a brand new series country video, and this is another edition of Why Did Naruto Movies Cannot Happen? This time, Naruto Shippuden, the movie edition. This is not my personal opinion, it's based off of facts and being objective as possible. Anyways, before I cover this movie, I need to mention one teensy little problem. This movie does not have a subtitle when it needs one! My apologies for yelling a little bit, but it does not make any damn sense why this movie does not have a freaking subtitle. Especially since every other Naruto Shippuden movies have a subtitle with it, even freaking Bonds, even though that t subtitle isn't really the best out there. And literally, people have to be like, oh, well, you know, it's called Naruto Shippuden movie, so it has to be canon, right? Vron! Vron! It's not, the movies are not canon! They don't make any sense with the Naruto timeline! It's just that you put the freaking movie and they don't even give it a subtitle! Like, why? Why is it called Naruto Shippuden in the movie? It doesn't make any damn sense! If you ask me and my editor, who, by the way, edited this entire video, I would have called this Naruto Shippuden, the movie, Priestess in Peril. Uh, well, you know what? It's like, you know, that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's a good- that's a good title, right? It's a good title, right? It relates to the plot. I don't know why I didn't call it in- or gave the movie the subtitle. I, I don't know why. And you might be wondering, well, what's the Japanese title? Oh, it's called Geki Joban Naruto Shippuden, which literally translates the movie version! I can't take it. I can't take it. Why? Just like, why? Do you guys see the problem here? Do you guys see the problem? And honestly, the subtitle idea, me and my boy Drew, we had a good subtitle idea. But if you have a good subtitle idea yourself, let me know in the comments below. Because I would love to hear it. I would love to hear it because someone's got to fix this issue. Anyways, let's get sane started. Naruto Shippuden the movie, Priest and Peril, as I would like to call it from now on because, again, Naruto Shippuden the movie does not make any sense, debuted in Japanese theaters on August 4th, 2007. The US DVD release was officially released on November 10th, 2009. Holy crap, I was nine back then. What I would give to watch this in theaters today. Oh well, you know, at least I can watch it on my completely legal streaming services do not come after me please do not come after me i i watch this movie on completely legal streaming services anyways the movie revolves mostly around a man named yomi who attacked a shrine to retrieve the spirit of morio a demon who attempted to destroy the world and create his thousand year kingdom yeah i am very serious that this movie is the most wacky one so far that we have seen anyways yomi offers by as a vessel until they could retrieve morio's original one still in a different shrine and a priestess known as Shion is the only threat to him being resealed, so it's up to Naruto and pals to essentially protect her on the way there to stop Morio. And kick his ass, of course. You got that? Good. Also, as always, timestamps on screen so you guys know what I'm talking about when I'm presenting each point. Now, before I even get into my main points, there's a big problem here, and that's the, the timeline. I cannot pinpoint this timeline at all, but apparently this movie takes place after episode 53 or 42 so at minimum this took place either after the kazakage rescue mission or episode 53 which was after tenchi bridge which 
doesn't make a lot of sense considering the fact that Naruto did not go on any additional missions in between, well, those two arcs or after said arc. Because after Tenji Bridge was the Hedon and Kagzu arc. By the way, there was also speculation that this movie also took place after Hedon and Kagzu arc, which also did not make any sense at all because guess what? Naruto had the freaking Ross and Shuriken. And the fact he didn't use it once doesn't really make a lot of sense, especially when you're dealing with a freaking world-ending threat. That's just one of the minor problems when dealing with this movie, and that's just nothing compared to the three major problems that literally plague this movie. The first problem being that the world building does not match the actual story of Naruto. In other words, it doesn't make any sense. First, they try to shove this dark medical ninjutsu stuff, which doesn't make any sense at all. And there isn't really much of an explanation with it as opposed to, well, regular medical ninjutsu. I mean, good news is you can get a feel for how it works based on the brief explanations and how it's shown to work. But dark medical ninjutsu as a concept can't really work in Naruto. Especially since you haven't seen someone like Orochimaru, for example, try to get his mitts on it. Like, if that shit actually was in Naruto, do you have any idea how much you would want to use it? Like, the only thing he likes more than young boys is Forbidden Jutsu, and Dark Melgo Ninjutsu falls into that category. Like, Kabuto, a son of a freaking Melgo chief, isn't bringing this up to him? Like, really? Not to mention, they try to convince us this Mori guy has been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and that this guy is some hot shit that can take over the world. HE AIN'T TOUCHING MADO HASHIRAMA! STOP IT! They can't even get the map right in the Naruto for this movie either while trying to justify this crap either. Like, look! Look! They messed it up! Look! This is not how the world of Naruto works! Moving on to the second problem with this movie, and that is a similar trend of Naruto being weaker than he's supposed to be, or dumber than he actually is. First of all, Shizune in this movie talked about how Naruto felt in learning defense jutsu during the train trip with Jiraiya, and asked Shizune why he's on this mission in the first place. First of all, what did he learn at that in that time skip besides a bigger Rasengan? Oh, and clone tech, I guess, which he used in the beginning of the movie. Wee! God, I feel like I'm freaking cheese from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Second of all, you have seen this man use the nine tails to go up against a freaking curse mark coward Sasuke, heard about him going up against Gara in Shukaku form, probably, have seen him son. Kabuto, well, oh, but now you're saying he can't go. Also, again, this movie might have taken place after the freaking Kaze Kage arc or after Tenchi Bridge. You have sent this man to save the Kaze Kage and go up against freaking Orochimaru, but you don't trust him on a mission to protect another vital figure to stop Morio? Really? Is your main concern should be whether or not he can handle the mission. It should be whether or not he goes out of control again because during these freaking two arcs of Naruto and Kaze Kage rescue mission and freaking Tenchi Bridge, he had issues controlling the Nine Tails. It wasn't about whether or not he was strong or not, it was the fact he had to deal with the freaking nine tails like get out of here with the bullshit also this movie like several others seems to go out of its way to make nar to super than he seems so just him not knowing what initiative means or other things as well yeah ha ha nar to a stupid even though it feels a bit out of character for him to not know what initiative means concerning he's probably heard the word before seriously Naruto movies. Stop making Naruto ten times super than he actually is. It's getting annoying. Like, it, it's not funny anymore. Thank God it's not as insane as it is in other movies. Oh my god. By the way, remember when I was talking about how this movie's timeline is a bit wonky? Yeah, this movie's the second worst offender when it comes to timeline issues. The worst? We'll get to that when we get to that. Finally, our third problem, things that should not be in Naruto, Priestess Edition. Let's go. It goes Terracotta Army, the Dark Byakugan, Future Sight, let's go! Evil Tapeworms, Jawbreakers, Non-Curse Mark Transformations, and finally, the Holy Rasengan. What an impressive lineup. God, why are there so many freaking inconsistencies and non-can abilities 
that just can make my freaking head hurt. None of these are Naruto. None of these things should be Naruto. Especially the Jawbreakers. Why do y'all want to be Ed, Ed, and Eddie so bad? How dare this movie desecrate the sanctity that is Naruto lore? This movie needs to be trashed to hell and back. Like, uh, man, I cannot. What is my rating of this movie? 8 out of 10? Oh, yeah, it was entertaining, actually, uh, despite the inconsistencies. I, I really like this movie a lot. Plus, the ending scene with Naruto unwilling and agreeing to pipe Shion is hilarious. Especially with the fact that it's actually Naruto being stupid in a way I actually believe. Not really them just trying to shove into like a random word that he knows. Again, please, chill with this shit. It's not fucking funny anymore. It's being a freaking dead horse. But yeah, that's about it for this video, and that is why Naruto shipping in the movie cannot happen. Why? Naruto shipping in the movie. Bonds cannot happen. Spoilers for this movie, I guess if you don't want to be spoiled, then watch it. I would not want you guys to be spoiled for this movie because it is really freaking good. Alright, let's get things started now. So one thing people bring up here to me with the movie's release date or whatever, well, it helps with correlation with the manga, actually, and what anime episodes were out at the time. Luckily, this one is less complicated on the time versus the first Naruto Shippuden movie. So, Naruto Shippuden, the movie, Bonds, was released on August 2nd, 2008. Something notable was in episodes 7 to 30, the open sequence was replaced with footage from the movie. Well, that is cool and all, that is actually not the timeline where this should take place. This movie happens after Shippuden in episode 111, since Orochimaru was sick, which happened around when Sasuke was about to kill Orochimaru. Considering how Kaoto looks and Orochimaru being alive, this movie cannot take place much further in the timeline because Orochimaru has to be alive and working with Sasuke as this movie establishes. I do think the anime using the movie footage earlier doesn't hurt it too much, but if it did any later, it would be losing some points. Oh wait, this isn't a score since where I keep score for movie mistakes. <laughs> I, I doubt I can count how many there were in the last one. While the timeline where this takes place is decent, similar to how The Land of Snow made a decent placement where the events of the movie would have fit in the canon, the problem arises more with what happens in the movie and too many new elements in the movie that cannot be ignored. Especially since this is not referenced in any light novels as far as I'm aware of, and there is no mention of it in the manga. Now, without further delay, let's talk about them. First issue is a common issue with the Naruto movies, and that is world building. The main example of this being, once again, Dark Milk and Jutsu, and I mean Dark Chakra. Yes, Yes, we have moved from Dark Milk of Ninjutsu to Dark Frickin' Chakra. Woo hoo! Not only is this shown to once again not be a thing Naruto, but the things he can do are completely ridiculous. What can this Dark Chakra do? Oh, nothing much. Just a lot of the main villains use the Gate of Death with no consequences. Yeah, the Gate of Death, the Ave Gate, the one guy used against freaking Madara. Remember, the Ave Gate requires you to pierce your own heart and at the cost of your life. You get immeasurable power for a certain amount of time. And that gets completely bypassed by this villain. And sure, I get it. For what if having an OP character is nice? I, I, I love OP characters. Sun Drip Woo all day, baby. But the OPness has to make sense. And even though it can be somewhat bought due to this man having regeneration capabilities, it does not make any sense since he's using it from Chakra that does not freaking exist in Naruto! On top of that, there is the Zero Tails. Yeah, remember when Hagram created a Temp Tail piece without a name? No? You shouldn't! He never created him! And once again, this movie gives importance to a character that is not only going to be seen in the movie and not show up anywhere in the anime or manga in Dr. Shino. Though, dude was scary and a very good movie villain, but still. Also, Sky Ninja. Where in the hell did these people come from? I think I might get the point about the world building, so why don't we move on to the next issue, which is power scaling and lore inconsistencies. So let's get back to this man, Dr. Shino, who has access to the Gate of Death. This man was being the living crap out of Shippuden Nar to a guy who at this point was trained to learn the Rasen Shuriken. All before he would eventually get his ass kicked by both Naruto and Sasuke. Dude, if this guy actually had the eight gates, he would have splattered Naruto and crushed him like an ant. With all that chakra and concern he could get access to the Gate of Death, why the hell would he not use it? Dude, you're getting fooled by your earlier Shippuden and Naruto and Sasuke, use your freaking Gate of Death! The only reasons I could think of why this guy didn't use any of the gates is because he's either dumb or doesn't know how to use them, or he's bluffing. Could be a possibility, the problem though is, the movie never explains it! If you're gonna put something like this out there, movie, why in the hell are you not gonna explain this? Also, let's talk about the Zero Tales. Theoretically, if Hakurama did create him, he would be weak as hell. 
In fact, he kind of is, because Naruto whooped his ass even when Dr. Shino had him as this suge and Cherokee. Also, Zero Tails relies on hate for it to awaken and get stronger and was hidden in Konoha of all places? Why? And also, how in the hell did y'all let this man steal a freaking tailed beast? Also, if this thing operates by consuming hate, like how much Entei I consume on a week to week basis, why in the hell did this thing not awaken during or after Nine Tails attack? You know, where the villagers watch their families die or how about when the entire village bullied a toddler where were you at you fraud disappear when it matters most like a dallas cowboys in the playoffs my god and another thing why in the hell would high grandma create a tail beast that needs hate to get stronger none of this makes any freaking sense also this is what happens when Luis tried to jump the manga you get burned hard and now for the final issue the usual inconsistency issues in tech, wildlife, and other stuff. Let's see, we got naval ships and submarines. What is this, the World Wars? Konoha looks way too city like when the city ninja decided to be freaking terrorists. Didn't know Naruto took place during the 1940s! You got Sky Ninja dropping bombs out here! Welcome to Animal Planet, by the way, and today we're gonna get a two headed snake. Yay! A parrot? A saber toothed tiger? Oh, so now Naruto takes place in the freaking Ice Age! Oh, this is an animal plant! This is Naruto! And finally, they got Naruto's headband color on. Really? Really? How dare this freaking movie have so many inconsistencies and issues? This movie must be terrible because of this, right? No, I gave it a 10 out of 10. It was so freaking good, you have to watch it. Again, as I keep saying, I don't hate these movies. Except one. But... Yeah, I'm just pointing out why they can't happen. And that's all I'm doing. Nothing harmful or anything like that. I'm just pointing out why these movies cannot happen. And you know what? I hope you guys understand that and I hope you guys enjoy this video. In the place where the tree leaves dance, there one shall find flames. The fire's shadow will illuminate the village. And once again, the tree's leaves shall bud anew. Yeah, soldiers, it is your boy, the MACS Concern Video, and this is why Naruto ship it in the movie, The Will of Fire Cannot Happen. Title self explanatory enough, so I'm not going to repeat myself what this series is about. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the video. Oh yeah, spoilers for this movie, I guess, so if you don't want to be spoiled, then watch it. It's a really good movie, and it's worth your watch, and remember, this isn't my opinion on the movies themselves, this is why I don't think they're canon. Not again, not whether or not these movies are good or not. Which, by the way, again, this is a really good movie, so watch it. Okay, cool. Anyways, so Naruto Shippen the movie, The Will of Fire, which has also been called by the more superior name in my opinion, Naruto Shippen the movie, Inheritors of the Will of Fire, is the third movie for the Shippen the movie series. It was released on August 1st, 2009, and it was revealed on the Naruto 10th anniversary site, which is pretty cool to note. The movie poster can be seen after the opening in Naruto Shippuden episodes 113, 118, and 121, which is notable for our timeline as I said before the dates when the movie releases and episode related material appears, it can be pretty important. I mean, unless Kishimoto does a can prequel movie, then yeah, other than that, my advice is pretty solid. This is the first movie in which there is no new variation of the Rasengan. So I guess that means there are probably plenty of non-canon ones for me to look forward to. Yay me. Anyways, this movie, Inheritors of the Will of Fire, happens after shipping in episode 89 due to the large influence of the Hedon and Coxie arc. And according to the calendar in Sinai's room, this movie takes place between the 6th and 9th of an unknown month. Which how the hell is this supposed to help me? <laughs> Please, what, what the hell, movie? Do I need to check every 6th and 9th date to fit into this into the canon's amount? Why do this to me? Why? As a matter, as there is one major thing that helps me figure out why this movie is not happening. In this movie, Hanada is able to use the H track of 64 paws, which contradicts the manga and anime, as she doesn't successfully complete the technique until the 4th Shinobi World War, which takes place well after the events of the movie. So, we have now successfully debunked the timeline for this movie, you're welcome. Actually, let me give you another reason why the timeline wise this movie cannot happen. In this movie, there are flashbacks of Kakashi during this first Shami War, depicting him as still having his white light chakra saber still intact, as well as being able to activate and deactivate his Sharank on eye. Kakashi is seen with the white light chakra saber sheathed, despite the blade having been destroyed at the time. 
The only reason it isn't a smoking gun is the off chance this is a similar blade to what he used to own. Oh wait, we're back to Land of Snow again. With an incorrect Kakashi flashback. We also see a Castles movie where again, there are no monarchies in Naruto. Anyways, besides that issue, the first noble problem for this movie is Naruto did not use the chakra of the Ninetales or any character mention of it. While I don't think Naruto has to use the Ninetales chakra at any given point, it is noble that no one brought it up. Naruto probably could have had the advantage over Hiroko if he had used the Ninetales chakra. Now, there could be explanation that Hiroko could absorb Naruto's Fox chakra, but that is never explained or brought by anyone in this movie at all. This was also around that time Naruto was trying to kind of shy away from Ninetales chakra, but again, it's not brought up in the movie. And in these circumstances, with Naruto trying to save his sensei, it isn't really out of the realm of possibilities for Naruto to act as Ninetales chakra in the situation. The second issue that needs to be brought up is, once again, movies trying to shoehorn lore into Naruto. The Shippuden movies have to be the biggest offender so far, and it doesn't get any better when they try to give the main villain, Hiroko, ties to Sonning and Elite Village. Why? Why do these movies keep pushing in lore that doesn't really exist just so we can actually somewhat care about these villains or something? It isn't really mentioned in the manga at all, which is the original source material, and none of the ability shown makes sense in the first place, so why include this broken lore to make people confused? It's so annoying how shipping and movies continue to do this. Honestly though, at least it's a really good movie and not the trash I'm about to watch next. There is also the issue with this guy's powers. He has something called the Himura Jutsu, which does not exist. And this also allows him to steal Kekigenkai from some weird ritual. And naturally has an ability that allows him to absorb shock related techniques. This is not a thing. Cool idea, but it's not a thing, at least if you're not an Atsuki or maybe Roy? Does this man look like an Atsuki to you though? Hell no, he does not. Not only is the story lore broken in this movie, but also the powers used in this movie, like, really? Also, let's talk about this dude's lackeys or sidekicks. The only good one is the uh, female chick. And the launch induce are just pure nightmare fuel. They also have these mechanical wolves which belong to her and they are just weird and I don't think really fit. They're all from the Kimura clan, which, mind you, doesn't exist. This isn't Full Metal Alchemist. Also, they do a Dragon Ball fusion style into a Chimera when their powers combine. Luckily, besides that, their powers are generally fine and balanced to an extent compared to their boss. Our final point is the out of character moments shown in this movie or inconsistencies. One, Sakura hitting someone hooked to an IV. Really, she's a Malgasun. If you want to punish this man, just pull him by the ear. It just feels out of character even for the Naruto anime, which shows Sha Sakura hitting Naruto way more than she actually does. The Sin attacking Leaf Village in this one scene, which just feels so random, especially considering they have an alliance. And as an added bonus, Kakashi's Sharingan, which in the movie, shows his normal eye turning into a Sharingan eye. Kakashi's Sharingan is an implant. He cannot do that! Also, there is this moment where Sai was on a mission where Kakashi and the rest of Team 7, and this never really occurred at all until probably the war arc. Literally, there are plenty, plenty of issues with this movie, but to be honest, this movie was really good. I gave it a 10 out of 10, and it felt like an action and art story, even with all the inconsistencies, which is something I'm not going to be able to say in the next video, because I got Lost Tower next. Yay! By the way, spoiler, I do not really have anything good to say about that movie. <laughs> yeah, soldiers, it's a Blood Anime Space coming at you with another video, and we're going to be covering why Naruto should put in the movie The Lost Tower cannot happen. <laughs> oh yeah, quick warning, spoiler alert, I guess. If you don't want to be spoiled, then watch this movie before you watch this video. But to be honest, this movie is really bad. So before I get into the usual breakdown, I'm going to do a rant of my usual review I do at the end of these videos. Most because there are some things that just don't fit, and I, I don't really like too much. I I'm not a really big fan of this movie at all. Now let me get my biases out of the way for all of you. First off, the princess in this movie is really, really dumb. And lucky me, she was one of the main characters, so we get to see her a lot in this movie. Nard saves her from being pushed off a skyscraper, and she straight up slaps the dude. As a reaction fiend, I was like, okay, maybe this is just a reaction fiend, and she's scared. I was wrong. It kept getting worse. So then Naruto exposes the main villain's puppet bruise to her, and immediately, she wants to still trust him. This is the worst main villain so far for movies, by the way, so, and that will get its own section. 
So, getting to the time of the movie, the Lost Tower takes place after episode 152 to 154, after Dry's death and before Pain attacked the village. Already, the time is impossible because guess where Naruto was during where these events of the movie would be taking place? Oh yeah, he went to Mount Mio freaking Boku to train. But the quote he says in the movie, it's clear that Naruto mentions to Sara that his master was gone like his parents. I am paraphrasing, but you get what it means. And we see him learn how to use chakra blades in the beginning of the movie, so this takes place at the earliest before that filler arc he learned how to do it. If you count it. But even in the filler, he was not that dumb when he learned how to use it. This means also, if this is somehow after the pain arc, he should be way smarter too. And also, sage mode. But this doesn't even matter because of the time travel in this movie. Yes. This movie did time travel before Boruto, surprisingly enough. That might need its own topic one day. Yeah, no, it definitely needs one. They're sent back in time 21 years before the series timeline. There's a scene that shows each arc of Ramen's grand opening. However, the first data book states that the restaurant was actually opened approximately 34 years before the start of the main storyline. You must be wondering, how can it get worse? Trust me, this movie finds a way! During the Ninetale Fox's attack shown in Candy, Hiroshima's hair was depicted as brown. However, in this movie, Hiroshima's hair is depicted as white, even though it took place long before the Ninetale's assault. Also, Shizune is in the village when she shouldn't be here. Mito is never in the Anbu or on a mission with Shino and Choji's dad either. That aside, why Mito took off his Anbu mask is a mystery to me, because most Anbu would not really do this. Yamato is an exception before anyone leaves a comment about him. And Kakashi is also here for some reason. Also, there is an animation error with a headband being worn wrong, but I'll allow it. Heads up, I'm about to spoil the ending a bit with the time travel aspect, though before I do, we need to remember how this all started. So they use an infinite chakra resource, which has its own problems, but I'll ignore that for now because, sure, why not? Infinite chakra could theoretically have all kinds of abilities, even time travel perhaps. I know it's called the ley line or whatever, but it doesn't matter. This grand line thing is one of the main deus ex machina for the story. The main villain must have insane bore to levels of intelligence feats to pull this off. Originally, my editor, Drew, who was watching this with me, actually liked the time travel explanation Mito gave. So when the main villain died, Mito explained it undid what he originally did and Yamato and Naruto were returning to the original time. I am ignoring some bullshit Mito does when they are leaving, but I'll get to him later. So Drew was like, okay, if everything happens as Mito says, it should fix everything, as if Mukabe dies and the actions he did will cease to exist because he died in the past. Otherwise, we'll get some time looping shenanigans, or worse. So, it's simple time travel logic, right? The main villain will cease to exist and everyone should return to the present in a different location because Sunai would have no reason to send Team 7 on that mission, right? Well, we got slapped in the face later by this movie because Sai and Sakura still remember what the heck happened for some reason despite me until basically saying, Retcon no Jutsu. All you had to do was send us back to when Naruto was probably set going to train in Mount Miyaboku and this probably could have worked, but nope, you couldn't do that, could you? Time for why this movie is not canon. Well, first of all, all reasons stated above, as there is no way in hell that time travel can be a thing in Naruto unless you do it how Boruto did it. Yes, Boruto did a better job with time travel than this movie. That should speak for itself. The excuse with the Hiroshin is weak as hell, and the fact that Minato apparently knows what the hell time travel is does not really make any sense whatsoever, considering this would be the first time anyone in an ninja world would have encountered something like it. I know, I know Minato's a genius, I, I know he is, but come on. Hirasha has never been shown to work this way either. Yes, it's a space-time ninjutsu, but it's never been shown to take someone back through time. Just basically some type of teleportation shit, you know? But let's just pretend this movie didn't have the time travel thing. It would still have problems because they insist on something called the freaking ley line that has infinite chakra. Infinite chakra. First of all, ain't no way this is not going to be fought over for generations if it existed. You think any of these villages are not going to be fighting over that shit? Even Rosh Tomorrow or the Akoski would be all over that. Naruto's entire goal for world peace would become a lot harder with these villages starving for infinite chakra. Second, how would this even exist? There is nothing in Naruto's universe that has ever had infinite chakra. Tail beasts don't have infinite chakra. But Susuke don't have infinite chakra. Not even our favorite chakra monster Naruto has infinite chakra. How in the hell would something like this exist? Especially since it is in the middle of freaking nowhere. How can these ley lines have infinite chakra? Like what the hell are they doing in Naruto? 
I feel like I could go on and on even more, but I need to keep my voice! Wait, Mitsu has a ceiling formula to be able to steal something like this, right? Even though I can kind of buy it, but they don't really explain the logic behind this, especially when it comes to sealing infinite chakra. So once again, I ask, HOW?! And lastly, people are a lot dumber than they should be. Not just Naruto, since he apparently can't even recognize his sensei at least a little bit, or even Mito. I mean, come on, he should have at least been able to catch on when Mito was kind of giving him some clues. Naruto should at least recognize Choji slash Shino's dad's voices or looks like they are in live and in canon. I I'd even buy it if he mistook one of them for their sons and called one of them or both by their names, leaving them confused. Naruto should at least also be able to recognize that one of the Anbu is Kakashi towards the end of the movie. I mean, Yano's dead. I know they're kind of friends, but like Naruto, like, this is your sensei, recognize him, please. I mean, I mean, I just love it when Naruto in these movies is just dumber than he actually is. I mean, I just love it. It's that sweet serotonin button, you know? Um, and apparently, Ryuto can figure out what time travel and such, but this is the difference between a kunai and a shuriken. I mean, serious, he calls out shuriken shakun to do multiple times, but fires kunai not once, but twice. And, but who knows, maybe he's been, he's been practicing Genjutsu, right? Well, he, maybe he's been practicing Genjutsu. I, I wouldn't put it past this terrible movie. Oh yeah, and the game of Rasengan for this movie is the Fire Sun Rasengan. Wait, never mind. His actual name is Ultimate Supreme Rasengan, which for some reason creates a wind shield. Not the one on your car, but like the shield made of wind. Also, the main villain for some reason doesn't know what the Nine Tails is. Even though, I'm sure Naruto and Shuriken stats would be more spread out by this point since... The guy is from the Sand Village, the villain, not Naruto, of course. I'm done with this shit. Low 4 out of 10. Horrible fucking movie. What person better be better than this? Wait, what's that? Oh, no. I have to talk about the worst Naruto movie villain. Are you freaking kidding me? Ready to pull your hair out? Oh, um, because I am. This man wants to use the ley line to not only take over the Shinobi world, but the entire universe. First off, you're not that guy. You are not that guy. You're not an Osutsuki. You're, 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 you're not that guy, man. You don't have the Osutsuki DNA in your body. You're not that guy. Second, out of all the Naruto villains, out of all of them, this guy has to be the worst, and he has to have the most unrealistic goal, man. Can you even breathe in space, my guy? Can your puppets go far enough to travel the planet? Because otherwise, you sound like a moron. On top of that, this man was pumping an infinite chakra from the ley lines into a fucking puppet. This dude claims he can take over the whole universe, but sucks balls. But first off, how in the hell are the puppets able to hold chakra like that? With how the great puppet master Saucer used them, even he wasn't pumping chakra like that to make them stronger. Can a puppet even contain chakra of that magnitude? Or this guy's puppet is built differently, as it literally made from special material? I don't know. No one explains anything about this in this entire shitty excuse of a movie. He massively improves this city with technology that seems way too out there even for Naruto, although Naruto is a bit inconsistent with technology, but Mela, it's a bit far out there. He can trail the ley line chakra for the buildings. There's this huge machine he uses to extract the ley line chakra, which is not explained. And again, it looks a bit too advanced for Naruto. Not even the rain village with its almost steampunk aesthetic looks this way. Again, like in the second movie, there is a freaking elevator again. Oh my god. And then there's also a monarchy he establishes. We all know monarchies are not really fitting in Naruto. It's more like you know, feudal Japan, lords, you know, military leaders, you know, that good stuff, you know. Also, there are tikis in the middle of a desert. Tikis. Now, maybe there's some of them missing, potentially, but I don't think tikis are, should be in the desert. I, I don't know. I, I just don't think that's possible. I mean, maybe there's some of them missing, but I don't think that should be a thing. Also, it's fame this guy is so forgettable, given that me to use a Freaking mind canceling juice to make everyone forget about him. Probably good for his sandies, not good for ours. And they some still somehow messed that up. I'm done with this movie. Again, low four out of ten. Get this out of my face. So that's the worst piece of Naruto content I've ever consumed, but still. And this is why Naruto Shippuden, the movie Blood Prison, cannot happen. Oh yeah, the good old uh, spoilers. 
Uh, if you don't want to get spoiled, um, make sure you watch the movie first and come back here. Got it? Good. This movie is pretty, pretty good, and it's worth your time, so I recommend you watch it first. Now, with it being canon, well, there's a lot to talk about, so let's get into this. Naruto Shippuden, the movie Blood Prison, is the eighth overall Naruto film and fifth Naruto Shippuden film, which was released on July 30th. 2011 in Japanese theaters. Fun fact, despite taking place after time skip, this movie drops the Shippuden in its official title. However, the DVD release with the logo shows Shippuden as normal. The events of this movie are mentioned in the Kakashi Hida and Light in the Icy Sky Light novel, but it's very uh, different in many ways. And I'll save the Light novel discussion for another time. So let's just actually just talk about the events of the movie itself. For the first time, there's a real-life reference for a thing that can happen, which was a sculpture shown in the castle. It's of the Ecstasy of St. Teresa by Berrini, which illustrates a moment where divinity intrudes on an earthly body. Though let me know in the comments if references should count or not for the series, though for now I'll note them when they come up. First problem in the movie, Konohagakur is still intact, despite the fact that Naruto learned Sage Mode and Menace Fire due to the assault by pain, implying it never happened. The Kusagakur symbol shown on the four protectors worn by Muko and Ryuzetsu, is incorrectly shown with four grass blades, despite it being canonically depicted with just three. Muku is part of the Kusakabe clan, by the way. Kusagakur is erroneously said to have existed while the Sage Six Pass lived, despite the village system being created well after his death and based on the system used by Konohakakur. The exact timing that this movie takes place in is pretty unclear and unknown. This is due to various story elements being present in the proper story, while others are not. Let's run by some of them, shall we? First, Naruto knew Sage Mode and remembered when he met his father, despite the fact the invasion of pain had not yet occurred. Also, Tsunade is wide awake in this, despite being in canon being in a freaking coma. A, the fourth right Kage still in his left hand, despite having lost it during the five Kage summit, which we see this at the beginning of the film. The Leaf and Cloud Village working together this early is a bit questionable. And also, Naruto knew Killer B, but Naruto did not meet him until their train at the Island Turtle. There is no mention at all to the fourth Shinobi World War, despite Naruto only meeting Killer B as a direct result of the war. This only happened once war had been declared by Madara Uchiha, and all missions had been suspended as a result. If I had to put this movie somewhere, I'd probably put it after episode 196, but that would be more when recommending to watch it, and even then, there's some of these contradictions are a bit uh, off. Next is a ton of Naruto feats. Naruto has this chameleon mode, which I'll try to show a clip here, but and if I can't show it, uh, blame uh, copyright. Naruto is officially shown entering Sage mode. Each time he does so, his red coat, which he was only shown wearing once when battling pain, appears, despite the coat not being part of the transformation at all. I will admit, it looks really cool, and I wish he kept it, but it's not part of transformation. Naruto is shown using multi shotgun technique while in Sage Mode, despite his previous explanation that more than five would disrupt his ability to maintain the mode. However, given that no clones were stationed at Mount Mianboku to gather nature energy, he may have simply had enough time to prepare enough natural nature energy prior to battling and could find without restrictions. Naruto is randomly shown using Rasengan without making clones, despite him never working out how to do this. Until you guessed it, the battle against Sasuke. For a technology section, Masashi Kishimo mentioned the world Naruto will not have any firearms, though there are plenty of blood prison guards holding, you guessed it, firearms such as a flintlock rifle, though none of them were ever seen to be used. Although there is a gun in the first arc of Naruto, that was a minor one-time cameo feign, and Kishimo never intended to be a continual feign. Nor is the gun ever fired, so who's to say it even is one in the first place? Well, it kind of is, but you get my point. On top of that, we can also add this prison and the wish granting box in the mix too. We'll get to the wish granting box later though, because I have a lot to say about it. While I could buy a prison of some sort existing for the worst criminals in the ninja world, Hozuki Castle is never mentioned in the series at all, at least in the main story. And it definitely feels off that in order to make the prison seem tougher, there had to be more jutsu exclusively created for this movie to make this prison OP, such as the Celestial Prison Jutsu, that locks you out of your chakra and makes you weak. Now, while these are jutsu I could buy in the Naruto world, it's kind of the same for these to exist because you think someone like Madara or Obito have passed a chance to learn this jutsu? Hell no, it would make their lives so much easier. I mean, they wouldn't have to fight the Jin Turkey at all. Like they could just hunt down the freaking tail beasts themselves, put them in the celestial prison jutsu and move on with their lives. Itachi too, I mean, he could make, it could make his job hell easy too. Hell, Roshimaru would even take a go-to-jail card just to learn this jutsu. It would leave Sasuke's body right for a taking, and we all know 
how much Orochimaru loves young Uchiha bodies. Also, the warden Mui knows a life transferring Chisu. Actually, forget that. It's a freaking Keke Genkai, and so does another character in this movie, but it works very differently. Apparently, they are part of a clan that can transfer their life force to someone else at the cost of their life. Again, rarely repeat that. Their only purpose with this Keke Genkai is to transfer their life force and take away their own life, take out their own life force and stuff, just to give to someone else. Not only does this Kage Genkai seem a bit pointless considering Malcolm Ninjutsu is a thing, but it doesn't even have a reference anywhere else except maybe the light novels. The other character is Ryuzetsu, the gal who helps Naruto throughout his time in prison, and ends up sacrificing her life for him too. Fun times. R.I.P. Ryuzetsu. I didn't know ye long, but you'll be immortalized forever. In <clears throat> Entei. Fine, let's talk about the fucking wish granting box. So this is supposed to be a box used to grant wishes, and the main antagonist this movie wants is to see Sun back. Unfortunately, things go wrong as you'd expect, and it turns out, this box is mind-controlling this dude's dead son and turning him into a monster, saw so everything inside the box, and everyone has to stop before essentially we get the zombie apocalypse. I'm not joking about that. Now the main problem with this box, it is said that it's supposed to exist during the Save 6 Pass era, even though there's no mention of it of throughout the entire series outside the movie. Also, the monster in question is called Satori, and he can basically turn people into mind control slaves, or as I said earlier, zombies by putting them into the box. Also, this box gives Satori basically a cheat code to never be hit and stuff. Great. Again, there's no mention of this box at all in the series, and it feels off that no one would have gone after it until now, considering some villages would probably want some of their wishes granted too, right? Oh, and apparently I can read Fear too. Fantastic! Also, Gambuta for some reason knows about the box too, which raises even more questions. I mean, maybe he might know about it, but I would have expected it to be more about from come from the Toe Sage or something it, up in Mount Miyaboku. Or Fugasaku at the very least, but whatever, I guess. All in all, my overall opinion of this movie is actually pretty positive. I actually really like the movie, movie a lot. I, I like the twists that they have for this movie, and I like the villain overall. And along with the Five of Satori, this is actually a pretty good movie. Again, just because I say these movies aren't canon and stuff, I, that does not mean that these movies are bad. I really like them a lot. I am sad that Ryuzetsu about to die, but overall, this movie gets a 9 out of 10. I really do recommend you guys watch it. It is so much better than Lost Tower. And this is why Road Ninja, Nar to the movie, cannot happen. So, Road to Ninja, Naruto the movie, also known as Naruto Shippuden the movie, Road to Ninja, was released on July 28th, 2012, in Japanese theaters. For the series, we'll go with the name Road to Ninja, Naruto the movie, but comment down below if you like the other title better. Fun fact, the movie was shown in some United States theaters, which is cool to note. Now, there are a lot of other stuff that's pretty notable. There are eight different promotional materials made for it outside of the movie listed on the Naruto wiki. I'll probably check out some of those, but that is a story for another time. Now, I might be saying that, hey, Naruto's manga career Masashi Kishimoto personally conceived the story and designed the characters for this movie. So this has to be canon, right? Well, despite Masashi Kishimoto himself having written the script, that does not make this movie canon. The time frame this movie is set in doesn't correlate with canonical events established by the manga's timeline, seemingly deviating from it past the point of Naruto's stay on the island turtle. The past also has a timeline issue with the flashback scene where Minato puts on his Hokage coat, which is pretty different from the episode The Four of Hokage's Deathmatch. The majority of this movie takes place in an alternate dimension known as Genjutsu World. The majority of the entire cast has different personalities and behaviors compared to their actual selves. Despite this, however, some still possess their own personalities and behaviors, which I found a bit unusual. So, for this breakdown, we will only focus on the point that they are in the real world, as that is what the rest of the series is focused on. However, I will count Zetsu, Obito, Naruto, and Sakura's thought processes. Or processes, I, I, I don't care. And Naruto and Sakura's thought process in the Genjutsu world when it's notable, of course. A reference for this point at 1747 till the end of the movie is just in a dream world. Until the point they return to the real world again and not catch Oito or go after him at all? Also, shouldn't he have the white mask by now? For a timeline, it's safe to assume that it is meant to be after Nagaso's death and Toei took over as the main antagonist. With that in mind, Naruto has not yet had a moment to himself at home between Jiraiya's death and the end of the war. And yet the Akatsuki should be dead by this point, so how are they alive with no other tents to speak of? It's real that Black Zetsu was them all along, but that's not really how his transformation ability works. He can only copy appearances and not full-scale abilities or skills. 
Like, how the hell is Zetsu as good with a scythe as he died? Like, that doesn't make any sense. If he could do that, then he probably would have needed moderate or Obito to help him out for a spine in the first place. And again, he should not throw hands like that. Let's be real. Zetsu is a freaking coward. Let, let's be very honest about this. Even if you could try to buy the fact that he could copy their appearance and use some of their skills, he is not built for combat. He is a mama's boy, first and foremost. Also, this is nasty power skilling too, by the way. L if we're looking at it from this perspective, like Shido humbling pain, Kodam fighting hand to hand, Lee and Guy humbling Itachi in base. And again, did anyone remember not to fight Hidon in hand to hand combat? Apparently not. Also, why is the hell is the village still intact? And why isn't anyone going to war? Looking this closely, this is supposed to be during the war. So, go to war. Also, what did they do to my boy Minato's face? Pain gave him a face job, holy crap. But pause, pause, pause. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the mini infant Tsukiyomi, AKA the experimental Tsukiyomi. A fun concept, but it obviously doesn't really exist. Plus, there are some issues like the caster going inside of it. The main thing with this is that the movie was basically speculation on what the real infant Tsukiyomi is gonna be like, and they went for a less powerful version to show it off, I guess. Unfortunately, this does not age well when we know what the Tsukiyomi is supposed to do, especially when it's in the hands of freaking Kaguya. Sakura recognizing Naruto's parents is one issue in the Genjutsu world as well, but you might say, Sakura would recognize the 4th Hokage and Naruto's being mean to was no secret, so it's very likely Sakura knows that the 4th Hokage is Naruto's father. Counterpoint. So then, why didn't she recognize him in the war, and how would she know Kushina? Remember, not a lot of people knew that Minato and Kushina had a thing. Or the fact that Naruto was Kushina and Minato's son in the first place. So again, how would Sakura know that? On top of all that, Naruto seems brighter than usual even though he should be preparing for war by this point and went for a heavy character arc during the pain arc, while Sakura is back to hating her parents. Yay. Also, why the hell isn't Naruto cheating at least by this point? Iruka doesn't even consider that for him even though this guy being an s rank ninja. Also, what the hell are these Jodin promotions? I mean, sure, they could exist, but they never show up in the actual story, and... Yeah, I'm still really salty Naruto never got one promotion in the entire story. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yuruka could have at least made him a Chunin, because, like, why not? Like, who's stopping him? Like, you're telling me that a guy that beats freaking Pain, beats freaking uh, Kakuzu even, all these uh, S-Ring ninja and stuff, uh, he's apparently not good enough to become a Chunin? Like, are you kidding me? On top of that, there's no KCM, even though this movie is supposed to have occurred before Naruto joined the war. Also, I cannot believe Naruto has never had a birthday party, but that's more of a nitpick for this movie. Last two points real quick, there is a train game that never really happened, and there is a transportation due to done differently than in canon. Yay. It's contradictions like these that don't really make this movie can at all. Especially since we know that no one knew who the hell Kushina was, so why would Sakura, of all people, know the takes place before the war arc? Naruto never knew who, her, who his mother was, until he met her while he was trained at the island turret with Killer B to get KCM. Does that mean this movie's bad? Hell no, it's not. Again, as I said, I don't judge these movies as art or whatever based off of if they match perfectly with the Naruto can. I judge them based off of how they are as themselves, as their own media. And me personally, I think it's a solid movie, but it's one of my least favorites. I gave it a 7 out of 10, which again isn't bad by any means, but it's one of those movies that felt like there were too many times where the characters felt out of character. The scaling felt off, especially Ken with Setsu, like come on man. And other stuff that didn't make me really enjoy the movie as much. Besides that, it's very hard for me to fit it in the timeline. At least with some of the early movies past Land of Snow, you could say that they take place during the filler season of the few months Naruto was to do anything before training with Jiraiya. Which even if that's not completely known what the hell Naruto is doing those few months, I can see why someone would want to use his movies and filler to fill in the blanks. I mean, it makes sense, because, like, why not? It, 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 what's he doing during that time? And while personally, I wouldn't necessarily do that, because, again, you could make an argument that Naruto could have also been training or recuperating during those three months because of his fight with Sasuke and stuff before Dry takes him away, but you could, again, at least make the argument, right? But... That's not the case here. Again, at least with other movies, even if they don't fit in with the timeline as well, at least they try to do it. But it doesn't feel like this movie does a good job of trying to fit into the timeline, even if you want to make this thing canon. It's again very hard for you to do that, because where do you put it? Like, where does it go? Like, where do you- what, what do you do with this? And besides that, again, I just wasn't as much a fan of this movie. 
Like, do you have any idea how many, how much I would have loved to have movies like Bond, Will of Fire, and Galel, and all these other movies to be canon? Like, I wouldn't mind that at all. Just because I talked about how why they can't be canon doesn't mean I don't. I wouldn't want them to be. I mean, because they're good movies. They're they're pretty quality. But with what with this movie, it, it's just I'm not as much of a fan of it. It's decent, but it's not one of my favorites, so I can't really go to bat for it as much, especially, and it doesn't help that it doesn't fit in with the timeline. I hope that explained my thought process, and... Alright, and that's why all the Naruto Shippuden movies cannot happen. Thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this series or the video, please drop a like. If you want to join my Patreon, it's in the description or whatever. And before I sign out, question of the day, which non can Shippuden movie is your favorite? I gotta say, I like them all with Roach Ninja being the weakest entry at 7 out of 10 and Lost Star being so bad, it might get some review. I'll let you guys ask for it though, because man, I don't want to waste my time watching that movie again. Anyways, comment and get lost if you want me to review that movie and feel free to answer the question date in the same or separate comment to Easter own, I guess. And this has been your boy, the Anime Stays, sign up. Peace, you're hot. Bye bye. Peace.